starting out in a new research area, it can be kind of overwhelming because there is a lot of literature that you need to um, read and get up to date on. And so today I'm going to tell you about some of the strategies that I am using to organize all of my references in the reference manager, as well as take notes on things, both um, quick notes and more detailed notes later on, so that I can organize everything and be able to find things more easily and try to keep from getting overwhelmed while still taking in information. So one of the things that can get most overwhelming is when you go, you're looking at papers and that takes you another paper and another paper and you end up with like a bazillion um, browser tags open and then your computer crashes true story many times. So what you want to do is instead what I do is like when I find a paper, I add it directly to my reference manager. And so the reference manager is going to keep track of all the citations and stuff, um, allow, have the link so you can go find the paper later. Um, some of them allow you to annotate, take notes and stuff. And then when you're doing paper, writing your paper or, or a report or anything, um, they have to have integration so that you can then easily cite things. So I use Mendeley. There's other versions like, um, I mean, there's other software like Zotero, Pages, EndNote. So when I'm on an article page, I just click this little icon in my browser and then I can add the article to my library. And then inside of my library, what I do is I make like tabs and sub tabs for various concepts. So I'll have like in techniques. Um, so I have a tab for like each technique and then various like sub tabs within it, um, tabs for different like papers on software, that sort of thing. Um, and so this way I can easily find things when I go and you can also search by the author by key terms and that sort of thing. Um, and this way, whenever I have a paper, then I have I know when I look that I'll be able to find it again. And if I'm interested in a specific topic, I can find it that way as well. When you're adding it, um, one thing is to make sure that the metadata for the articles loads properly. So the authors, the year, the date, the, um, the links and everything. In Mendeley, there's like this little like um, magnifying glass that you can click on in the actual, um, in the, link and when you're, I mean like in the entry in mentally so either in the web server or in the desktop um, and then it'll check it up and make check it out and make sure everything's good um, because what you don't want to happen is when you go to do your report or whatever and then it's formatting things really weird and then you have to go fix it so just do it when you're importing it directly okay so when you're first starting, speaking of having all of those tabs open and all of those different papers, so how do you even know where to start with the papers? Um, so when you're first starting, what I do is I like find really recent review articles. Do not rely solely on review articles, but I like getting a sense of where the field currently stands and then go and read the primary literature cited in the review. So in the reviews, they're going to be telling you about like what they their interpretation of things, but also like kind of just summarizing all of these different things. Typically, they'll have some sort of bent or angle that they're trying to go on often like based on what like their own work. So it's like it's not that it can be on it can have some bias. But the key thing is that you're using it as a way to find the um, find information about other papers and what is kind of on the radar of these different um, people in the field. And so then go in go and find those references of the primary literature, so of the original studies that the reviews are citing, um, and go ahead and add those to your reference manager and um, then you read them. If you can also find articles by asking people in the field if they have suggestions. So if you've just joined a lab, you can talk to your PI, so your principal investigator, the head of your lab, um, other people in the field. Um, and also, sometimes they might just mention papers in passing, um, and they might not even have the, the full thing. They're just like, oh, blah, blah, blah's paper from, I think it was in cell or whatever. So basically try to find those articles that are on people's minds um, that, there were, that they stuck with people. And so you want to find those and make sure that you um, make sure that you're going to read those and add them. And then in terms of, so that's how you like getting started. And then you can then find papers from those papers as well as like, you wanna make sure that you stay up to date. So in addition to starting with where the literature is currently standing, which is like why you want to make sure that it's like a really recent review article. Um, and then, so sometimes it's, there can be like really good review articles that aren't so research, 
recent and those can be good too but you also want to make sure you're reading a really really recent one even if it's not that great because it's really what you care about is finding the finding the places to go look for more um, in-depth information that you can then um, analyze yourself but you need to make sure that you're staying up to date so you can set up alerts for like key terms or topics or authors so like rss feeds or email alerts um so i'm currently working on setting some up with like google scholar um the nih's um pubmed various um various feeds for various websites as well as i keep like i bookmark and i regularly check new articles of listed on the websites of key publications in the field. Um, and so often they'll have articles that are posted online before they're actually posted, like or uh, officially posted or whatever. So like these like preprints, um, which have been peer reviewed, but they're not actually published yet. Um, you can also set up alerts with like BioArchive and those are actually preprints, so they haven't been peer reviewed yet. More on those type of things in other posts. Um, and then in terms of keeping up to date based on the papers that you read, so you're going to read these papers and maybe you're, they're really fundamental papers, but maybe they're older, or even if they're not older, they are still going to be work that's going to happen after, even if they're brand new right now, there's still going to be work that's going to happen after. And so I like to check and see where the papers that I read have been cited to see if there are like any updates. Um, so I like to use this tool called Cite. Um, it has a web browser as well. There's a free version that's a little limited, uh, more limited functionality, as well as some institutions like um, have a subscription to it, or you can get a personal subscription. But what it's going to do is it's going to show you the context, like who cited it, and then the context. So then you can see if it's like worth going and checking out the article. So I found this is a really helpful way to find the latest based on the papers that you are reading. I'm um, speaking of papers that you're reading more on this another post, but you can um, there are tools that you can use to see um, if you can get free versions of papers, as well as like this pub here um, where you can see if there are retractions or if people have comments pointing out um, various things about the paper. They're not always negative, but sometimes they are. And so those are important things to, to know. Okay, so now you've identified papers that you've wanted to read. Okay, so now you have all the papers and you've got them in your reference manager software. Um, another thing about when you're adding them to the reference management software is that I like to make a like notes with overviews of each paper, like just quick notes when I add it to the reference manager, kind of saying, in, in one sentence, like, why the heck did I add this to the manager? So why did I choose to save the article, especially if it's not clear from the title? Um, so did someone recommend it to you? Did it introduce a new technique or software? Did you find it in a different paper that you were reading? And so like, was there a specific context that made you like, oh, I really need to read this paper? Um, and so in my notes, I'm going to write down, make sure you include so the citation information. So make sure especially that you put the first and last authors. So just to note, remember that all this information, like the more detailed citation information is in your reference manager. But this is like I keep an electronic notebook. So I have like a OneNote um, where I keep notes on on the papers and stuff. And then I can search the notebook and I can find things more easily. But you want to make sure that you have the first author. And so this is the person who like did most of the hands on work, often like a graduate student or a postdoc. And um, then the last author, just, these are like the corresponding authors. And so this is like the people whose labs the work was done in. So you'll see that sometimes there are multiple like first authors and multiple corresponding authors. Uh, but you wanna make sure you have those names. Um, so the first author, because that's going to be like who the paper, like if someone just says blah, blah, blah at all, it would be that first author. And then the last author, because often when people are talking about it, they're gonna be talking about the person whose lab it is. So especially if you're talking about someone in, like someone in the field, talking with someone in the field, they're going to be like, oh yeah, that paper from blah, blah, blah's lab. And so you need to know whose lab it is. And so then this is going to allow you to kind of like put the two and two. Okay. And so then you also want to make sure you have a hyperlink. Sometimes when you just like copy a citation, it doesn't have it actually hyperlinked. It just gives like the DOI or whatever, which you can use to look up the paper, but it's helpful to just have like an actual hyperlink. Okay. 
So now for the experiment info. So remember, this is just like the quick notes and later you can take more detailed notes. This is just like when you're writing, when you're saving the reference or when you're doing a quick thing, just so you know what papers that you have and if you can like quickly see, oh, well, I think I read a paper about this technique or this thing, or I saw this paper and I saved it, but I didn't have time to read it thoroughly. Um, but that way you have this information about which paper you should go back and read more thoroughly. And we'll talk more about taking notes when you're reading in a minute. But I like to keep info on like the experimental techniques used. So just broad terms like did they, was this a ribosome profiling? Was this a RNA-seq? Was this a toe printing? Like these are all ribosome things I'm talking about mostly. Um, but basically the techniques that was used as well as like the key findings. And anything that you know was later disputed, expanded upon, changed, et cetera. So sometimes you'll find what a paper because it's cited in another paper are saying like, these people said this, but we later found this, or these people, we originally thought this, but then there was this, we modified this technique and now blah, blah, blah. So you want to make sure that you write these down. So especially when you're reading older papers, um, especially older methods papers. So often there will be a lot of variations on the protocol and updates and modifications made to improve things. And so you want to read the original paper so that you know like this fundamental, um, the basics of this technique and the basis of it. Um, and because the other papers are gonna be like, we did it like this group, except with these modifications. And so you want to make sure that you know what modifications were later made as well as knowing the original stuff. And so, when you want to be able, you want to know that going in. And so make sure that you jot down that information, especially because you might be reading this when you're finding a paper in the context of another paper. Um, that note is going to be important for you to make sure you keep that in mind when you're doing your deeper reading. You're going to approach reading papers in different ways, depending on your purpose of reading the paper, your stage of the research, and that sort of thing. So right now I'm at the point where I'm basically trying to just, I'm new to this field, I'm new to these topics, and I'm trying to just get an overview. So there's, there's, research, there's areas I'm more focused on it. But right now, I just kind of need to get a sense of sense of the field, sense of various things when I'm trying to just set up all these experiments and like think through things so that I make sure that I do everything. I get myself going on the right footing. Um, one of the things about when you're starting out on a project is that you want to really make sure it's it's easy to want to just like dive right in and do stuff at the bench, but you have the opportunity to set things up so that things are going to be good for you or things are going to, if you rush into things, you might be forgetting things, you might not take into account things. And then once you set up a technique a certain way, it's harder to change it. And so you want to give yourself the best shot going forward. Okay, so when you're reading an article, the first pass through, so I have a lot of these articles printed out because I find it helpful to kind of like minimize the distractions when I'm reading a paper. So there are definitely benefits of reading on a computer and I will get back to the digital versions and I will take the notes on my digital notebook and that sort of thing. But I actually like to read just like hard copies and kind of like shut out the world. I have like noise canceling headphones. There's a nice set of stairs. I'm on the fifth floor. So I've been like stair mastering it up and down the stairs um, while reading. Um, just try to kind of get in the reading zone um, and when I'm reading, so of course, when you have a paper version of something, you can't like click on hyperlinks, but that's actually kind of a benefit because I have this problem where I go from one paper to another paper to another paper and I end up going down a bunch of um, rabbit holes. And so when you're doing this like first pass reading, you want to try to avoid doing that. Um, you can always come back, especially if you make things easy to find. So what I've actually been doing is I have been like highlighting the highlighting the references that I'm interested in. So if I see a reference, I'll just like take a quick look at the reference list and see what it what paper it was, especially if it's just like a number to see if it's something that I've already read or I already have in my book. Um, I mean, my like reference manager or whatever. If not, I'll just highlight the reference and then I can go back to it. And I'm also, I also highlight like key terms and short phrases. So avoid like just like highlighting everything because that's not useful. But if you highlight just like a quick word or a phrase, then once I once I finish reading the paper, then I make some notes and then I can find those, I can make notes on those highlighted terms and I can go and I can add those highlighted references. Um, so just like avoid the urge to go to all of those references right away. 
Um, and remember when you're adding the references to potentially note why you added that reference if it was based on something that this paper said about that paper. Once you've done that first pass reading, you also want to then go in addition to what you had written when you were just adding the article, you now want to add some more details. And when you're doing a more, much more detailed um, reading, this is going to be even more important. But in addition to the basics um, that we already talked about, I like to write like one to two sentences summarizing the key impressions of the key findings and your impression of it. So remember that these people are telling you what they found and how they interpreted it. But what are your impressions of it? How strong was the evidence? What were the strongest, weakest points? And when this is applicable, how does it potentially fit into your research? So as you get more into the research, um, this is going to be more and more important is trying to put your research in the context of this other research and this other research in the context of your research. Um, and if something might directly impact your work and or change your thinking, then you want to take more detailed notes on that. And so you can take more detailed notes on the aspects that are more important to you. So everybody's going to have different notes um, from reading the same paper. And that's kind of that, that's 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 good that's um because you should learn you start to get good at kind of focusing on the things that are most important um most important for your research and i mean like don't like get a narrow mindset but it's important to kind of be able to prioritize various information which is why it's great to have these sort of like quick notes about the various papers and about the various um, things and to have everything stored in your reference management because you're just not going to be able to read all of them in super duper depth. So, but it's important that you kind of are able to find those papers that you do need to read in more depth and be able to recognize them. And so this is going to help when you kind of, instead of do, when you do these like quicker reads in the beginning to try to find the papers that are most important and read those so you don't waste your time doing deep reads on papers that don't matter quite as much. But you might have instances where you have a paper in your library because you saw it being referenced in a different paper um, and then you want to know the context of that as well as if there was something you need to look up a detail on later. And so the great thing about these reference managers is especially when they're like cloud based and you don't have to worry about it taking up a bunch of room on your computer, you can um, then know that you can find that paper in the future. And it'll be easier to find the paper if you've made um, good notes in your notebook, even if they're just little quick notes um, with the details that are going to be most important for finding it and finding why you thought it would be might be interesting to read later. And so hope that helps. And now it's reading time.